dating boys for chips and chicken like full campus life a number of sugar daddies three to four sugar daddies anything anything you know to survive anything to make it life with Rusov, my lovely so welcome once again today is aids wild aids day and uh i thought it's important for me to address this topic i mean this is something that has affected every one of us in one way or another personally i'm going to tell you why i was close to 30 before i even could lose my virginity why i was virgin till that late i lost my virginity maybe at around with 24 or close to my 24th birthday and this is why uh, if you're new to this channel there's another video on my channel that talks about some things that i'm going to be talking about later so you can check it out that's called uh, my aids journey or my aids experience so my experience is while growing up um i first got to understand hiv aids around the age of i would say maybe 10 and uh, we had a family friend who happened to die of hiv aids and not just him but his wife and uh, his two kids and i was so young to understand that but all i remember is the time he was sick his wife was sick and my mom being the person she is the very kind person she is she was there for this family quite a lot helping them and uh, all i remember is the stories of the excruciating pain that the headaches they had they had so bad headaches that they would scream that someone thought they were dying but the pain was too much and unfortunately around that time when i was like 10 there were not good medication yet the stigma was high uh, people were not so aware about going to the hospital that time we had what they called the tasso in uganda i think it was something like i don't know t i don't know what it stood for then aid services something like that services organization and um there you could get help but it was not people are not really aware of it so that was like my first traumatic experience with hiv aids and of course not to mention while growing up these are things especially our mom talked about oh my god i almost forgot so in the neighborhood where i grew up oh my goodness we had i think it's what you'd call a kiosk like a, a small shop in the neighborhood where you could get to buy some emergency things we had also those moments where all of a sudden you notice there's no more salt in the house or the sugar is not enough and, and my mom would send us or the the um, house managers to go and buy something on short notice you know and this gentleman was called sam that's what we used to call him and i think this was like the next couple that died of hiv aids i mean this we were so familiar with these people they were also friendly with us like they were like friends that's how i put it family friends this gentleman was actually the chairman or lc one of the area and so loved by everyone and then it was shocking for us as kids to notice how they change you know as they got hiv aids and were all so very scared of that until they're dead and now this explains why am i telling you this this is a way to let you know like as i try to explain to you why i personally was a virgin till almost like i was 30. so when you experience such traumas in life and then your parents telling you what to be careful of what to watch out for i personally thought the best way to protect myself was not having sex at all abstinence i mean we knew we were aware about use of condoms but it's it, it was still something where we had stories like oh it could break someone could put a hole in it or you could still get infected you know in the process of the romance you know like foreplay so it was really really scary so this is my journey at the age of 12 that's when you're a teenager right the hormones are playing crazy you, you're finding every single boy attractive you're discovering your sexuality you're discovering your body and um at the age of 12 i was mostly like teenage teenage um because i'd noticed like people you know like the books the body shape but it was starting to come up i remember my very very first like crush was in i think at 11 but i was not sure what that was so at the age of 12 you're getting excited about life and then what happens um my very 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 favorite uncle 
gets HIV AIDS. And they were not talking about an uncle who is in his 50s. I, I don't remember how old he was, but he was probably maximum 22, 25. And uh, I had a very, very, very close relationship with this uncle. I connect most of my favorite childhood memories to him and my late grandmother. That is his mother, or my mom's mother. And uh, I remember as a child, um, I spent quite a lot of time with him because among all my siblings as one that got to spend so much time in the village like at my grandma's every christmas every easter um i got a chance to go to my grandparents uh catholics so of course they celebrated christmas and everything and this uncle was part of my you know my beautiful memories uh, i remember um, um my very first uh cooking experience was with him um <laughs> Like for Christmas, of course, they would do traditional meals, uh, like a carol. For those of you who are from West uh, Uganda, um, and they would do the matoke, that is the like the banana mash and so on, and the white rice. And then, like in our family, it was very popular to do what we call pilau in the festive season, like rice uh, mixed with meats and something like that. And then I remember telling him, "Oh, uncle, uncle, I want to make pilau for Christmas." And it was like, "Why not?" So. And I remember my grandmas, they didn't have like a cooker. Of course, they didn't have like a charcoal stove. They had, you know, like where you cook on stones. And uh, Rinyanko, you call it Amahega. So like he made that for me. He had told him everything I needed. He helped me cut the onions, the tomatoes, you know, the, the, the beef, like sliced into small pieces. And he really, that's actually my very, very, very favorite childhood memory. Besides, of course, with my grandmother. Mm. And he helped me prepare this dish and I will never forget how proud he was of me and how proud he was telling everyone I prepared this dish. I don't remember if it was tasty, but at least I remember that he was praising me and telling everyone she prepared this meal. And to have him suffer from HIV AIDS and the most painful bit is that his journey was like so quick. I mean, from my mind, from the moment we discovered he was HIV positive, it felt like just a few weeks he died. For me, that's how it felt like. And I remember I had just joined secondary school at the age of 12 and um, we knew he was sick and he had become very, very sick very quickly. Like the memory, the last memory I have of him, he had lost like all his weight was just made of bones. And I remember like his big, 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 quite beautiful eyes and his hair, like curly, he has very nice hair, like my hair, I would say. And um, that's... Um, like my last memory of him um, and then of course while at school uh, I got the letter that he had passed if to get see the details of that video you can check out the other video on my YouTube I have a video about that my, my HIV experience or something like that um, so all these experiences get to or they go to traumatize me I'll put it that way and also to, to affect the decisions I made as regards my sexuality, as regards my hormones as a teenager. So I remember in high school while if when we had um um as in an old girls school and uh, we had like uh, the possibility or the chance to exchange letters with boys in other schools. I never did that. I was trying so hard to make sure I protect myself like to make sure I don't get fall in love or get tempted to want to get into any sexual activity with anyone because for me it meant death. Um, so actually my popularity in high school, like all level was, I had friends. So I had one particular friend I would say who was very, very popular with the boys and she got so many letters and I was always the one like who would help her read the letters um, and also reply. Like I was very, very good, uh, with languages. I was very good in literature and the English language I was always like the best student in the class. So I helped her like answer the letters. And for me, somehow I lived through her, you know, like helping her craft these beautiful romantic letters. But personally, I never got to do exchanges with boys on a personal account because it scared me. Mm, fast forward, I joined university. So like I started, university was like one hell of a jungle. At campus, there was this, I think it's even still used in Uganda, where people say people have sex or have relationships at university just for chips and chicken. I don't know what's with chips and chicken, but at university, everyone thought that was hip to have chips and chicken. 
so unfortunately many girls engaged in illicit behavior with uh, the fellow peers or even with lecturers just to have that kind of lifestyle in this video i would like to give shout outs and kudos to my parents because i was never in that position luckily enough my parents made sure that i was financially in a safe state that i never had to like to engage in such behavior to be able to buy chips and chicken <laughs> like i was very financially independent and stable thanks to my parents um and then not to forget the upbringing i was brought up in such a way that i valued myself way 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 too high like there's no way i was going to have a relationship or an affair i would put it that way just to have chips and chicken that was for me a no go like Oh my god i value myself way so much that's no one's going to do that and honestly not to blow my trumpet at university as one of those girls that okay here it comes everyone wanted to date i think i can take the compliments by myself i was very attractive intelligent and um very popular at university but somehow i'm proud of myself that i managed not to fall into like the trap of oh my god now i'm going to date everyone and get chips and chicken thanks god i was empowered thanks to my parents but not only the financial bit but because i was really brought up so well especially kudos to my mom we had really or we still do have a very intimate and friendly relationship with my mom Mm, my mom to us is more than just a mom she's like our best friend up to now i can talk to my mom about everything and anything you know so it helped a lot like talk about such things and the consequences with my mom uh so i remember at university like while everyone was dating for chips and chicken i know people are going to come for me but you can let me know in the comment section what you experience was at campus we had girls having multiple boyfriends and on top of that having also like five sugar daddies because you need a sugar daddy to finance your hair you need a sugar daddy to finance your lifestyle like if you want to go eating or uh, you need a sugar daddy to finance your wardrobe you know your clothes and everything you need a sugar daddy for the club nights speaking of club i didn't go to any club until i graduated from university i'd never been to a club i'd never been to a disco which is ridiculous when you come to think of it because you all know what my greatest passion in life apart from serving people is dancing traveling and so on but dancing is like high 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 and it's ridiculous to imagine that i never went to the disco but it was also intentional because i knew what happens in the club first of all i was very attractive secondly i had the hormones just like everyone else of course i found men and boys in my university class attractive but I thought if I go to the disco and get hyped up and excited and get lost in the moment, maybe I'll do something that I would regret. So without making this video very long, that explains why I never had um, sex until in my late, late 20s. And not to say that I didn't date, I managed to... Managed. Like I got to date a very, very, very amazing guy in my last year at university. He was a lawyer he's now a very very successful lawyer and uh yes we dated like romantically we would spend some time together but the farthest we ever went was like kiss like really kiss 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 i love kissing i'm a sucker for kissing so for me that's one of the criteria if i'm dating someone they have to be kissable just so you know uh like kissing him was amazing okay but we had both the same values like we decided we're not going to have sex until we get married unfortunately i didn't get married to him for reasons that i'll talk about maybe one day i think that would be a very very interesting video and an eye opener why i never got to marry my first boyfriend my first love um but yeah we had the same values so we never got like sexual it was good for me because like i was like I don't want to get HIV AIDS, I don't want to get pregnant, like all those things were very important to me. But it was an amazing experience. So fast forward, um, I graduated from university close to, I think before I made 21 years old or something like that. Um, I finished my university when I was still very young. And then, uh, then I managed to be able to go to club like for the first time. Thanks to my eldest sister, our first boss was like, I remember one time where we had a call and uh, she that time she was already living in london doing her studies and then i think i don't know how it happened but i was like i've never been to a club i think she asked me about a club in uganda called angenois and i was like what's angenois is that like a shopping mall or something i was like 
that's a disc and i'm like what i've never heard about it she's like what how did you go through campus without ever finding out what a club is and then i remember her telling me i'm going to transfer you money on your account pronto and i want you to go to the club every weekend there's no way you can save me a bit to the club and that's how i started going to the club so this aids day that was like my story but i also want to talk about what that means for the hiv that has been living on for years and years this is my story but they're also stories that are not nice that are painful other times i felt like i missed out on my let me say my teenage years my young adulthood yes i did and uh, the many times i think one time in my life i was like it's crazy that I never got to have a one night stand, that I never got to experience and maybe explore my sexuality. Um, I got married very young and uh, I honestly sometimes think I missed out on certain things because of this fear, because of these um, traumas that I experienced due to HIV AIDS. And to think that it's now been decades of years and people still die from HIV AIDS. Of course, the situation has gotten better, there are medications. People don't die so painfully like they did in the past, so like my uncle or our family friends did. But it's such a sad situation to see that we are able to find vaccines for a virus in six months, but no one has... It's, I have the feeling like there's no efforts to end this. Of course, I know there will be a possibility our scientists could do that, but it's no effort because, well, the majority of people affected are... I would say marginal, marginalized countries, so no one really seems to care. In Uganda, when you look at the statistics, I read about them yesterday, there are still very many youths having HIV AIDS and dying from it. And uh, my takeaway from this, from this, speaking of today being World AIDS Day, is my wish and my dream would be that we have a world where the youth and the humans don't get to miss out on part of their life because first of all of stigma the trauma the pain and the danger of hiv aids my dream and my hope that one day um we find maybe a solution a vaccine or proper medication against hiv aids and for my young adulthood for my youth that never got to experience uh, my takeaway is well i'm glad i wasn't reckless that way because i lost friends you know like i went to school with i lost more family members to hiv aids and of course i'm glad that i survived and ridiculous as it sounds this trauma still follows me even in my late adulthood and even here in europe it still affects me i'm still really scared of like getting hiv aids so on one side, it's a good thing that it helped me not to live recklessly. But on the other side, I lost out so much on part of my life because I was scared of that. And on this day, like I said, I want to pick out three or four points. I want to honor my parents, my mom and my dad for always making sure that we were provided for financially, emotionally, and that we had a good upbringing that protected us. I'll put it that way. These are things that we take for granted. I mean being able to not sleep around for chips and chicken, being able to finance an amazing lifestyle at university, which other kids didn't have, is something that those days I took for granted. I was like, I am getting provided for, but now that I'm an adult, I earn my own money. I know what it took my parents to be able to provide for me in that way. And um, I would also like to remember my uncle, late Uncle Musingosi, um this uh national aids day comes after a month that is also very difficult for me the month of november and it's like it goes through it's crazy the year ends and for me it's always um a mess like mixed emotions um i i wish my uncle would have been here to see us grow to see how we've turned out because he was um invested in us he was an amazing uncle he was very proud of us um I hope I've made him proud and all my siblings. I hope wherever he is, he watches over us and sees us and is happy for us. And I hope that he's happy wherever he is. And um, for 
for anyone out there that has HIV AIDS um, through my social empowerment journey where I get to advise some people for example that want to better their lives I've also had people WhatsApp me and tell me for example I have HIV AIDS would I still be able to get a job with HIV I want to tell you that at least we're living in a generation where the trauma and the stigma is low but of course in some areas it's still there if you have anyone in your family in your society in your friends circle that has hiv aids hiv aids is not airborne being with them will not make you infected having a nice time with them hanging out with them sharing food with them sharing a cup with them will not make you sick all they need from you is their love and support stop stigma stop mistreatment and um, segregation of people with hiv aids but most of all, let's pray and dream of the day when the world will be HIV free. Thank you.